same as last time. I'll just be a minute or so. I'm looking for something to talk about. Right. Uh oh. So in that situation, we always want to identify like why we die. Well, I guess in that situation, it's not a ton you could have done, but very l paying attention to that very little audio awareness is definitely important. Yeah, like right. I just heard him and I was gonna like turn around, but that's a little bit too late. Yep. So a little bit of an un un unnecessary recall usage when we weren't like low and we didn't we had already blinked away from the flashbang. Then after that we continued to stay in after the fight was lost. Dude, last time we discussed how to tell whether or not you've won or lost the fight. Um, I, I, I don't believe so. No. Okay, so then we'll go over that after this game is over. Over. Last time, just out of curiosity, did we go over Tracer? Uh, no. No? Okay. It was mostly his scan. Mm -hmm. Well, Tracer is it's scan, so I was wondering. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. No, it was, like, it was mostly, uh, it was, um, Kree, Widow, and a little bit of Honda. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. I'll just, uh, have some things to talk about after this game's over then. Alright. Do do do. So just to give points in which we will discuss, just so I remember and you remember, we'll discuss blink management, distance played on Tracer, um, watch paying attention to kill feed and watching and knowing how you won or lost a fight, and then those are some of the ones we'll be discussing afterwards here. Okay. If you're stuck in that corner, might have recommended like grappling away sooner. We just kind of like sat there when we're a sniper and they're like an inch away from us, right? So yeah. might have recommended grappling away. Also could have used our mine there as well. Very nice shot. Okay, have we in the past discussed high ground usage at all? Um, uh, I think so a little bit. Okay, so as a reminder for high ground usage, right? High grounds are fantastic positioning. They give you lots of visibility and lots of survivability. And we want to look to take them. So particularly, we have not like it looking. We have not taken the top left high ground at all yet, and that's very easily accessible when like nobody on their team's contesting it as Widowmaker to just grapple up there, right? That's going to give us increased visibility. It's going to allow us to stay alive longer. Right, so probably be a good idea to look to just grapple up there when we're not being contested by anybody else up there. Now, if we are contested, then we can drop and swap, uh, you know, drop mm -hmm. if we need to, right? Go back main. Um, but other than that, probably look to take high ground. We also could have taken high ground when we were on Tracer and we were looking to, like, maybe push McCree off of there or something of that sort. Yeah, definitely.
Ah, uh, snap. I could, probably could have fit in something there if I was paying attention sooner. Yeah, so... I don't think we have enough time now to discuss anything, but I probably could have fit it in if I started talking like right as the fight around then did. Yeah, this one. So yep, I think it's a good idea to start off using high ground here. Definitely support that. Hmm. Good idea to look down at the floor, like that tech idea. Okay, very nice. If you're looking to go for a flash, I'd recommend trying to flash over his shield or flash up at like above his head, because then you can go over top of his shield even if he is shielding. Yeah. Where's my where's my the kill feed where you see he just died. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have done that. Do you think that if Widowmaker scoped in sending still, the, the flashbang is required? Probably not, no. Alright, so in that case, maybe we can use just you know normal shooter in the head and then flashbang someone else in that instance. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen if you'd like to take a look, and we'll discuss a couple things. You can leave that game, um, and probably um, don't hop into a queue yet. Hop into a queue like when I'm like halfway through here, so I'll like tell you like after we're done like one or two of the points, then we'll then you can hop into a queue, I'll just let you know. So um we're gonna talk about a couple of things. Firstly, let's talk about how do you tell whether or not you're winning or losing a fight. So this is most easily seen, it gets more complex than this, but this is most easily seen through watching kill feed, right? Kill feed's at the top right corner of your screen. This gives you a lot of information, right? So when you are uh up or down one to two people, that is an advantage or a disadvantage, right? You play more mm -hmm. aggressively or more passively in that instance. When you are up or down two to three people, that is a won or lost fight, right? When you have won a fight, you play super aggressive, you push in much further. Um, when you are down that the two to three, right? when you've lost the fight, then you play super passively. You look to either get out if possible, or you let them kill you. This way you don't stagger. Are you familiar with that term at all? Ah, uh, yes. Yep, so just as a quick reiteration, right, it staggering is just dying late, right? So that would mean that you your team walks out of spawn ahead of you, and then they have a decision. Either they uh, wait for you, in which case you've just wasted a bunch of time, or they walk in without you, in which case they're going in at a disadvantage and are more likely to lose that fight. Um, I would also say don't use ultimates in one or lost fights. Now, we had a couple of fights where we were, like, down two people, and we just still kept going in right we, we just did i think we did that during two fights in particular where we were like down two people on an attack and we just kept going and going and going and going right um yeah. not the play instead back up and we ended up staggering i believe once or twice there or at least we're close to staggering in any case right so we want to make sure we're not doing that now moving on on tracer let's talk about your range preferences on tracer so you, tracer your range preference is 10 meters right um on average right you can go a little bit closer a little bit you can within 10 meters is good um you can probably cap at cap at around let's see um probably say you want to cap at around 15 meters usually right so 15 meters would be like uh, 15 meters closer would be our preference range 10 meters is our um even more preferenced range right um the, from this range we are able to do our max damage while also being able to do blink melees and blink pulse bombs which is going to be handy tech to know how to do which i think i did see us going for blink pulse bombs um now, why we don't want to do further away than that is because the further away we go, we actually start to do fall off damage, where we do less damage if the further away we are. And we also have spread damage, which means that we're shooting a lot of pellets and a lot of those are missing, right? Um, yeah. Targets also become harder to hit the further away we are. I think we discussed this is stuff we discussed last time when we went over DPS, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just no, Trace's range is 15. 
closer, 10 preference, right? Um, whereas I'd say a large portion of the time, we didn't really stay within that preferred range. We just kind of poked from a distance a little bit. And then um, besides that, let's talk a little bit more about Tracer. Don't use up all of your abilities all at the same time. A lot, we'd go into engagements and we'd start off really far away and then we go blink, 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 and we get in there. Um, if you, in a, in a 1v1, or you're, let's say you're trying to get a kill and it's a 1v6, right? Are you more likely to get the kill if you have, and be able to stay in the fight longer and secure it and escape as well if you have three blinks or, or zero blinks? Uh, three. Three. So when we engage, most of the time we want to engage with as many blinks as possible because now, you know, we can use it to dodge abilities. So we're in a 1v1 against the McCree. Well, if we go in with zero blinks, we're screwed. We go in with three blinks, well, now we can um, blink around McCree, right? And now McCree can't be dodged at the flashbang, right? Um, yeah. When you blink, look to blink behind people. This confuses them, right? This makes them go, where the heck are they? Um, and then it puts us off of their radar. Um, when you're walking into fights, attempt not to blink engage. It doesn't mean you can never blink engage, um, but attempt not to if possible. Because when we, um, let's say we have one blink left here, right? So if we have one blink, right, and we blink engage, well, now we're coming in with zero blinks, right? Or very close to one blink. Whereas if we do the same exact scenario, but we walk in, well, now we're coming in with two blinks, right? So it's the difference I between... Yeah, you can start the queue now. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's the difference between coming in with zero and coming in with two just by walking in. Right? It's as simple as that. Um, so walk into the engagement. Don't waste all of your blinks. Space them out a little bit. Right? We would go blink, 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 recall all within the course of like three seconds. Right? Space them out a little bit. Right? So you would go, for example, you go shoot, blink. Right? Blink, shoot blink right instead of going blink 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 right so space them out a little bit um this gives you time to shoot this gives you time to do things um positioning wise come in from the sides last time did we talk about off angling oh uh, yeah we yep didn't. so make sure we're off angling come in from the left come in from the right this is especially important on a character like tracer because if you come in from the front means you're going to be stunned much easier, shot much easier, you're going to be shooting at the tanks and the shields, whereas you come in from the sides, you're able to not do that, right? Um, Tracer, she plays like an opportunist, so look specifically for opportunities, right? So when you are playing Tracer, you are waiting and watching for opportunities, you poke them from the side, so our play style will look like this. Instead of just hard aggressing, we're not going to go like this and go do 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 right? Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to come in, we're going to play on the right side here. We're going to poke a little bit, right? We're going to try to get do some damage, get things low. And then we hard engage when we see opportunities, such as somebody who's low HP, someone who's out of position. We have Pulse Bomb now. We just poked someone down, so now they're low. We have our whole team in, going in and engaging. We can engage now, right? Um, they're using ultimates. Now we can go in and get aggressive, right? So um, make sure we're playing as an opportunist character. We're going in and capitalizing off of opportunities. Okay. Right. Um, trying to think. Think that is about it for the moment. Is yeah. I, I, I'm gonna game right now. You got a game? Okay. Let me sp watch the screen. That. I uh, queued up for he healer this time. Okay. You stop streaming, by the way. Oh. Is it good? Um, yep, I can see. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Alright. Stream quality seemed to be going down a little bit since last time. Um, you might have to restart it like after the fight is done. But right. if that continues to be a problem, you might have to abstain from doing streams.
Okay. Note that your shift it has a 10 meter radius. So we there we attempted to heal somebody who was outside of our range with it. Alright, so right now note that your team is staggering, right? So at the moment we're down a bunch of people and as a team we should be looking to back out. If you see that your team's not doing that, we can always oh we can always communicate that in chat as an option. Get a mortality usage there. Probably would have been a good opportunity to use immortality, which we will discuss more right now. So when you use immortality, um, you specifically want to wait until people are low and in danger, right? If somebody's mm -hmm. critical HP and sitting in in your spawn and hiding, are they in danger? Uh, no. Okay. If somebody's full HP and being in and is in a grab, are they in danger? Yeah. Right. So immortality comes when both are needed. Right. Doesn't always have to be, but that's a general rule. Right. Not one or the other. Twice or you know, once we saw a scenario a situation where we immortality when people were not low and not in danger, and then we also saw an immortality. Yeah, so we during one fight we saw an immortality when people were not low and not in danger, and then during another fight we saw an immortality when, or sorry, we did not see an immortality when people were low and were in danger when we should have used immortality. So just watching for teammates, watching their health bars, watching their danger levels, and when do we need to use immortality? Besides that, apologies for speak talking over the last fight. <laughs> Okay, while we're on the topic and we have the time, shift usage is, is used when people, um, is used when ne healing is needed. He you can use it when you need healing, you can use it when a bunch of people on your team need healing, and you can use it when someone needs burst healing. So if somebody's really low and you need to burst them up really fast, right? Um, other than that, don't look, don't just waste it when those three aren't really options. Alright. Did we talk about sensitivity last time? Um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah I have a few okay. questions. Mm -hmm. So, do we do we talk about like what your do we did I ask you like what your sensitivity was? Um, I think I asked like, a few questions about like like sensitivity, the difference between wrist and arm aiming. Mm, okay. I think it was like more more on the lines of that. All right, so I, we might talk about that after we're done here. Critical danger, right? Watching for that. 
Don't want to let three people die in front of us when we have immortality as an option to keep them alive. Right? And then that it particularly could be our impact on losing that fight if we're just having a lack of, imp a lack of impact in keeping people alive. Right? Okay. So just put concentration yeah, uh... to our immortality usage. It's like a second ultimate, right? It's a really important part of your kit as Baptiste. Decent immortality. Okay, very nice. Wasted shift usage there. Alright, sorry, I forced my husband. Yeah. Okay, tunnel visioning a little bit on the echo, right? Let nano boost the Reinhardt sprint straight at us. Um, we also drop from high ground there unnecessarily, right? So, firstly, Make sure paying attention to environment, right? Make sure we're not tunnel visioning so much on something that we just completely forget the rest of the fight, right? Additionally, make sure that when we have a high ground advantage that we're not just giving it up by dropping straight back down into the fight because we dropped on top of our Reinhardt when we could have just stayed up on high ground, right? Yeah. Are you winning or losing this fight? Uh, winning. Okay, what's the percentage at? Uh, 99. Okay. Do you need to use an ult? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it, just, just asking, because, you know, I just want you to think through, probably want to be using your ultimate there, right? There's no reason not to use it if you know you're, you know, you have, this is the last fight you need to win, and you're already winning it, come in using your ultimate, right? Um, cause we didn't use it until after, like, the fight was already over. Right. Um, I don't know if we discussed the last time, but ults that are used first generally get more value than ults that are used second, right? Um, if yeah. you have a window and the enemy team has a window, if they window first, they shoot through it, they kill your teammates. Now you window second, now you have less teammates to shoot through your window, right? So ults that are used first get less, or more value than ults that are used second. On top of that, you could just end up losing the fight before you get a chance to use your ultimate, right? So, use your ultimate at the very beginning of fights, not at the end, if possible. Okay. Okay. Maybe unnecessary shift to usage again, just because, like, no Soldier Warrior is in no way in danger, so you could have just normal healed them. Right, watch your Reinhardt on the front line, pay, pay extra close attention to the people who you know are taking the most damage, right, and will be in the most danger, i.e. the person on the front line as, as the main tank. Keep shooting at the monkey when he's like 1 HP, right, you want to secure that kill. I think we have a really excellent sense of when you should be healing and when you should be damaging. That's really good. Um, you, you do most people. I need to go over that with, but you, you, you seem to be doing really good on that end. Maybe another wasted shift usage. Right again, check off those boxes in your head. All right, we, we just want to get out of the habit of just pressing it whenever because you know it's not really going to do anything if it's not needed. And then we don't have it for when it is needed.
Yeah, you're winning or losing this fight. Um, I believe losing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Winning or losing this fight? Losing. Yeah, it was really bad. Losing? Are you, are you sure? I'm winning side. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just I was just asking because you know it, it the you you were correct, and then your team popped off, right? So it can change very dramatically in the course of seconds, right? Whether you're winning or losing, right? Because there you were, I would say that be like up until your hog got like a 4k, that was a very heavily disadvantaged fight. Okay. Um, don't drop from high ground unnecessarily. Better survivability. You have immortality there. You use a health pack right next to you, right? Yeah. All different reasons which we could, all different ways that we could have survived in that instance, right? Yeah, I saw the mercy was low, so I was like, kind of dropping healer, but I can get back up in time for the Lucio mm -hmm. goes me. Uh, shift, shift, right? Just jump back up. Because mm -hmm. like in that scenario, we we sat there for probably like five seconds before we Lucio killed us, right? So it's plenty of time to shift and just jump back up. Alright, so why don't you go ahead and leave that game, and then I will be streaming. Um, not sure if we will have time for another game, just because I don't know how long the next game will last, but we can definitely do some quick plays if that... It, or we can just do replays, because you're platinum level you're like right on the edge where like quick play is like maybe probably not the best idea so like if you have some um replays we could also go over those after we're done talking about these so if you'd like to while we're going through look and pick out some replays of stuff you want to go over right um but in the meantime um i'm going to be going over some stuff so let's see um i think firstly we were going to Let's see, we're on Baptiste, right? So immortality usage. Um, when we're using immortality, the same exact concepts of positioning as we talked about last time apply, right? So last time we talked about cover usage, right? Um, good positioning is the usage of cover. Bad positioning is the absence of cover. So mm -hmm. therefore, the same exact concept applies to immortality, right? So if we were to place immortality right here, this would be a bad immortality because they can look at it and they can shoot it and it goes down instantly. Whereas if we place immortality right here, well now it's behind cover, so therefore it does the exact same exact same thing. Right, it pretty much covers the exact same amount of space, pretty for the most part, right? Yet it actually stays alive for the entire duration, which means it gets the most maximum value, right? So um, if you have cover to put it on, make sure you're looking for cover to use it on. Um, besides that, sensitivity-wise, um, I think that your mechanics look very solid um, with maybe some... Mm, definitely say, like, you, the left clicks could use some work, but the right clicks and just your orientation of looking around and finding people seems very solid. Would you say that you... Uh, and just, like, just out of... As a question to understand this better, would you say that you struggle with consistency at all with like making sure that your aim is like good most of the time, or do you feel like you're very confident in your aim most of the time? Um, I would say I'm pretty con like with like some heroes, yeah, I'm pretty confident. I did switch my sense and because like before I was using wrist aiming, and like when we talked about like wrist and arm aiming, like yeah, I figured out that like. I, I don't like I'm good at low senses, but I just don't feel confident, especially in my mechanics, especially like turning is super hard for me. So I just decided to go like full speed. So like I, I switched my mouse pad. Okay. So when so when you had a lower sense, what sense? Or, so did we? I don't think we did. Would have talked about this, but like when when you say you have trouble turning, would you? 
Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, so typically, a really good minimum point for sensitivities is you need, should be able to do from a left from the left side of your mouse pad to the right side of your mouse pad, right? The, or your mouse space, right? Not it doesn't have to be your entire yeah. mouse pad, but where your the mouse space you have, right? You should be able to do one entire 360, right? This mm -hmm. means that from the middle, the center point, either side, mm -hmm. you can do a 180, right? So this is going to help a ton with turns because that means no matter which way you turn, you're always able to make that turn very smoothly, right? So yeah. that I usually say is a very good minimum point for sensitivity. Oh. Now beyond that, um, that like so, so would you say that like when you, I don't know if you could guess that off the top of your head at all or remember that from the top of your head but do you know if you were able to do that or did you have to like pick up and move your mouse well um like well my, my sense was around four mm -hmm. so like i i used like four I, I did try three for a little bit but like that felt too slow so i went to four but i just i don't naturally like when every time i use like a slower sense like i did try to like speed it up but like it just didn't feel great to me so i just decided to go like full full speed like i like army we're saving better and i just feel okay. better when doing it yeah it's so a, like it's kind of new so yeah definitely. so so yeah. if you don't feel like you struggle with inconsistency then honestly the aim seems seems fine to me um typically my recommendation is a lower sensitivity but there are the oddballs and the odd ones out there are people overwatch league professionals who have it on high sensitivities so honestly from what i am seeing it looks fine um so it, it doesn't seem like it's too big of a problem so let's just move on then um have we discussed last time um the process of application to the things that we've been talking about because that's a very important point to just like know how do you apply these things um well like i've been like trying to apply it on, like on my own by basically like i've been doing some um reviews of like some of my um like comp play so definitely like i've, I've been seeing like my, my position issues definitely like i noticed throughout when you told me like stop left like uh shifting with my bath i i noticed that i would like even when like no one needs healing i would press it like on an accident or like by habit yep so definitely all right yeah. so yeah let's, let's talk about the application then so when it comes to applying what we've talked about right um, typically how you are to do that is the same exact way that you apply anything that you're looking to work on, right? That they, like, whether that be in game or out of game. And that is while you're playing, you're going to focus on the thing you're trying to work on, right? So let's select a, a cat. Oh, sorry. But what that means right, is you're not going to autopilot. You're not going to just play to play your and contrary to popular belief, you're not going to just play to win is when you just purely play to win, you end up kind of stagnating. Whereas when you play to improve, you end up winning more. Um, what that looks like is let's just pick out a category real quick, randomly awareness, right? If you are to look to focus and improve upon awareness, you are going to be thinking to yourself, awareness, 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 right? Giving yourself that constant reminder to think about awareness, right? And when you really focus and put attention and think about awareness all the time, your awareness is going to be better, right? And when you do this for a long enough period of time, that forms it as a positive habit. Once you form it as a positive habit, you no longer need to think about it nearly as much. It will just come naturally to you, right? So then you can move on to something else to work on, right? Um, I would recommend focus on like one category of things or one to three smaller things because otherwise it, it'll get overwhelming right if you try to focus on everything mm -hmm. all at once right wouldn't recommend that one other thing to add into all this is you can focus on multiple categories if they're very or multiple different things if they're very unrelated so for example your ultimate usage is a good example because in general when, when it comes to your ultimate usage you typically only think about how you use it like 10 seconds every two minutes right it's not a lot you don't usually put it's not an all-encompassing you're using it all the time type of thing right whereas your awareness is a you know something you're using every moment of the game right and your positioning is something you're using every moment of the game right so your ultimate usage you're going to be using a lot less frequently therefore you'd be able to overlap your uh, or you'd be able to focus on both your ultimate usage and your awareness but you wouldn't be able to do your awareness and your positioning at the same time because those two would overlap too much right that does that all all that concept stuff make sense yeah yep so then uh, like going over your own gameplay is completely good too like i mean like uh it's not 
fully a necessity for climbing um to do personal vod reviews i think some people have that impression um i went from silver to 4400 never once doing a vod review um but if you feel like you learn from that well go ahead and do it like there's no objections there at all but when you do go through um and this is how i self-improved as well and just worked on myself is look for mistakes Figure out the solution to the mistake and then look to apply that solution, right? So an example would be while you're in the middle of playing the game, right? You can do this or in a re review is think um, about what was the mistake. So for example, a death would be a mistake, right? So think, why did I die, right? What could I have done to stop that death? And then looking to apply that within our gameplay. So an example would be I die. I know I died. That's a mistake. I died. I know I died because I was out of position, so in the few, so the solution would be using cover, and then beyond that, the slu you know, I probably should have used cover over on the side. So if I died right here, probably should have been over here, right? So this is the process of identifying mistakes and looking to fix it. This is the exact same process that I'm using here with you right now and looking at your mistakes within your gameplay is I identify, huh, that was a mistake. He just misused his shift because the shift did absolutely nothing there, right? I identify the problem. I identify the solution to the problem, and uh, then I articulate that to you, right? So that's how you look to work on things. Very important information for you to know just so that you can look to improve upon yourself. That Just everything makes sense? Yep, you're tracking. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely going to review this a little bit later, but yeah. Yep, all right. So then I think you can just go ahead and hop into a quick play game then, I think, here. Um... Yeah, just go ahead and hop into a quick play game. And, or no, sorry, we were, did we want to do a uh, replay instead of quick play? Um. Did you do you maybe select one while we were talking, or yeah, you know, it's fine if you didn't. Uh, no, no, I didn't. No. Um, quick play or team deathmatch? Yeah, so for I mean, quick play would probably be better than yeah, team deathmatch, right. but yeah. So what would you, okay, um, so for um, DPS, what do you think, at least for around my rank, I should do, what, what characters do you think I should play to, you know, help rank up? Um, you probably want to, first off, I'd, my recommendation is just limit it a little bit more because you're very spread thin. But beyond mm -hmm. that, um, look to stick within, like we, we already talked about the different roles being like the, different from each other, but even within DPS, every role in the game has an additional two roles within it, right? So within tanks, you have main tank and off tank. Within DPS, you have a hit scan DPS and flex DPS. Within support, you have main support and flex support, right? So with DPS, you have hit scan, which is like all the hit scan characters, and then flex, which is pretty much everything else, right? Um, so if you, it, it looks like you play mostly hit scan characters. For the most part, try to stick to hit scan characters because those are going to. Um, those are probably going to translate into each other the easiest, right? So um, it seems as though you're already doing that. So that just keep on doing that. Maybe limit your hero pool slightly more. And then you're, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to actually friend you in game real quick. And then that way um, I can just spectate you from game. Oh. That way the, the just the quality can be a little bit better. Um, I'll, and you can stop streaming once you accept the friend request. Accept. Yep, so I am spectating, you know. Traveling to Horizon Luna Colony. Attack commences in 30 seconds. Mm, all right, well... Now I'm having a problem that's only in, it's not letting me spectate you. So one moment, let me try to see if I can fix this. Uh, should I stream again? Uh, give it a second, because this is a usual, hopefully fixable problem. Nope, um, go ahead and stream just in case. Um, I can always just not watch it if it lets me spectate you. But as of the moment, it's not letting me, which stinks. Uh, yeah, it's just a bug that happens sometimes in in a uh, quick play. It sucks. Speed kills. 
Alright, yeah. Is probably not too bad? Or is it... Yep, it, it had fixed itself after that one fight, so... Yep, it's good now. Look to take high ground, right? So, like, with that same grapple we used to go up there, probably just use that to stay up on high ground. That way you have that high ground advantage that we have been talking about. We we don't seem to like high ground very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. No, all good. You know, it's, it's uh, you're, you're lost. <laughs> True. Might want to request healing when we're low. Scrap home. Alright, so make sure you have Venomine down and active in the fight there just so it acts as a little bit of extra deterrent against those enemies on top of you. Aside from that, make sure being very hyper aware of the Doomfist, right? On their team, take a look. He's probably your greatest threat, right? He's going to be the one on top of you the most. He's going to be the one killing you the most. So we want to make sure we're paying active attention to him and making sure that he's not he's not getting the jump on us, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are looking for, since you do play a lot of different characters, if you're looking for character swap advice, typically... So like if you're thinking about like which characters are good where, typically Widowmaker is not as good on second point of 2CP because they have such close spawns that your ability to get picks, which is a large part of why Widowmaker is good, goes out the window, right? You can't do as consistent. Widowmaker doesn't do as consistent of a damage output. She does a very high, like, I'm going to kill this thing now, right? So mm -hmm. that go that value is insanely good on first point where their spawns are a mile away, but not as great second point where they come back instantly, right? Your, your kill doesn't matter as much when they come back fast, so you're probably better off going a character that does a lot more damage. Okay, uh, why do you think we died there? Oh, uh, I didn't have grip and no positioning. Hmm. What, what, uh, was, what was bad about the positioning? Cover. Yeah, I had no cover. Hmm. So no cover. Um, we dropped from high ground probably unnecessarily, right? Probably just could have kept high ground and stood up there, um, which would have acted as fantastic cover for us to be in, right? So every time you die, think through why did I just die, right? Because again, that, that there's, that's a mistake and we want to look to try to fix that mistake right so think through it um so look to take once you take this high ground probably recommend staying on it unless you like kill everyone all right so i was speaking there but if you had to take a guess why do you think we died there um no awareness or my awareness wasn't you know hmm. I, I didn't look around exactly right you didn't know the hog was there now um, probably say the biggest part that, that comes to is your audio awareness of actively listening to your surroundings, but then also just checking your surroundings and watching for them, right? So that you know to, to not let hog kill you. Alright, um, 
No, you can probably look to go ahead and leave the game now, if uh, just because I don't think we have time to finish it out. So I am streaming if you'd like to take a look. Um, and then just real quick on the note of audio awareness, right? Don't know if we talked about this last time. Quick review. Uh, if, if it is, just interrupt me. But um, for in terms of audio awareness, I'm streaming, by the way. Um, turn up your normal volume if needed. Turn down or off your music volume because this usually just clutters with audio. Make sure that on your headset you have surround sound enabled. If it is not an option, then make sure that you have Dolby Atmos for headphones on. This is the in-game equivalent. Um, you could have all those settings be absolutely terrible and still have good awareness or audio awareness if you are actively listening, right, and focusing on your audio awareness, you making sure that you're paying attention to footsteps and gunshots and abilities and ultimates, right, is going to lead to you being able to hear people and not die to hog, right? So make sure listening. Um, besides that, you also are able... Oh, never mind. You did stop your stream already. All right. So then let's see. Going over the main points, doing a quick review, and then wrapping up the session from there. Let's see. Um, ability usage. We went over Tracer very briefly, right? We went over Baptiste, and then in that last game we were on Widowmaker. Yeah, so those are the three mm -hmm. characters. Baptiste, Immortality. Make sure we're putting a lot more effort into it. You use it when it when people are low or and sorry, low and in danger, right? Um, shift usage. You use it when you are when you need healing. You use it when a bunch of teammates need healing, and you use it when someone needs burst healing, right? Immortality. Make sure you're putting it using cover, right? Tracer blinks. Make sure that we are not just going blink, 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 recall, right? Conserve them a little bit more. Make sure coming into fights with your blinks. Um, try to walk into fights if possible. Um, doesn't mean you have to all the time, though. It's really dependent. If you need to go in fast, then you need to go in fast. Um, besides that, make sure that you are pacing them out a little bit more. Blink behind people. Um, then over to Widowmaker. Widowmaker, not a ton. Sometimes we would like stick around or we could have grappled somewhere else um, like we'd be in danger We just kind of stand there instead of grappling and then maybe it'd say plays Venomine a little bit more on top of yourself up against like dive characters But not a big deal in Widowmaker. So Widowmaker all ability usage probably goes to like a low priority Tracer and Baptiste ability usage goes to a medium priority maybe even a medium high priority But we'll I haven't thought about the other ones yet, right? So then moving on Ultimate usage, Widowmaker, not a big deal. Low priority once again. Tracer, I only, th I think I only saw you use like one pulse bomb and we missed it, so not enough information to say. Um, Baptiste, pretty fine. Um, make sure we're just not holding on to it. Don't, don't hold on to it. Make sure we're using it. Use it at the beginning of fights, not the end. Also to use first, get more value than also to use second. Don't use it in fights that run or lost. Overall, ultimate usage on Widowmaker and Tracer was like a low. Bapt or Tracer, I can't really say. Baptiste was like a low to medium, right? Um, moving on, mechanics. Make sure that... Let's see, what what was our mechanics? Do do do. Um... I don't know if we talked about a ton of mechanics on Baptiste, or do we talk about mechanics in Widowmaker? Um, honestly, I don't know if we talked about a ton of mechanics. I'm probably forgetting something, but I don't think we really discussed mechanics a whole lot. So I think, honestly, you're doing really solid in mechanics, unless something is really lapsing my brain. So as of the moment, mechanics is looking like a low, maybe a low to medium, if I remember something. But as of the moment, mechanics is, is looking very solid. Not many big problems. I'd say on Baptiste, one of the things I was seeing a little bit of was overhealing. Don't heal people when they're full HP. That was about it, right? Don't. That's pretty much it. Um, moving on. Positioning, make sure we're using cover. Make sure that we are using high guns. Don't drop from high guns unnecessarily. Rotate to high guns in between fights. Tracer, respect your distance. Your distance, preferred distance is 15 meters with an extra preferred range of 10 meters, right? Play within that range, look to stay within it. Take off angles, etc. Um, overall positioning was probably like medium priority for you to work on. I think I would put it there. Mm. 
Again, we'll, we'll bump up the ability usage for Tracer and Baptiste to a medium high. This is just kind of on the higher end of the medium spectrum. Um, moving on, awareness. Pay attention to your health bar. Request healing when you're low. Pay attention to kill feed. 1 to 2 is an advantage or disadvantage. 2 to 3 is a 1 or lost fight. When you have 1 or lost a fight, you uh, play much more aggressive when you're winning, much more passive when you're losing. Look to get out if possible when it's lost, or let them kill you so you don't stagger. Um, and then don't use ultimates when you want to lost the fight. Um, besides that, pay attention to what is my team up to? What is the enemy team up to? Paying attention to our, our audio awareness so we don't get killed by Hog, right? Um, and then overall, awareness probably went to a medium priority as well. Maybe like, yeah, just say a medium. And then finally, survivability. We didn't talk a ton about survivability. I don't think it deserves like an entire category because I don't think it's very big. But just pay attention to your deaths. Think about why did I die? Look to fix those deaths. Um, and then let's put that in order real quick. Number one is probably going to be your ability usage, specifically on Tracer and Baptiste. Not so much on Widowmaker. Then number two is probably going to be, let's see, number two probably going to be positioning, right? Um, then number three is going to be your awareness. Number four is going to be your... Um, ultimate usage, and then five is mechanics, um, and then Widowmaker, that is just, I guess, slightly different. Widowmaker, it probably goes, like, number one is going to be your, let's see, what is number one? Number Widow Widowmaker probably is, do, do, positioning, then awareness, then probably your mechanics, then your ability usage, then ultimate usage. So a little bit of a mix up in, in how those are on Widowmaker. Um, any questions on anything we've gone over? Just anything else in general? Um, would you say um, when you use the left click for Baptiste, would it be easier to like play it more like Soldier and hold it or to like tap for each burst? Hold it. Just give me maximum fire. Right, you can tap it if if you feel like you're missing a bunch of shots. You can tap it situationally, like when you get a kill. Right, we can let go of it and then rehold it. Right, we can tap it. it. It's really just situational when you would tap it, but typically we hold it down because you get maximum rate of fire that way. Yep, and then you just and then you just learn how to adjust for maximum rate of fire. Right, I'd probably say the biggest thing on Baptiste mechanics wise I would add in is just make sure you're hitting all three shots. Look to track all three shots. Don't just hit your first shot. You want to hit three. Right, this is one shot. This is three shots. Very massive difference, right? So a lot of times we just weren't hitting all of our shots. Looked at more of them. Um, aim at head level. Even with Baptiste, um, go for those headshots. Track people, right? Just put effort into your left clicks. Because I'd say on Baptiste especially, it was probably left clicks was like the least efficient um, mechanical part of our kit. Uh, that about it. Any other questions? Uh, I think that's about it. All right. Yeah. So let me.